Greetings, brothers and sisters. I'm Professor Spira, and let me tell you a little bit about myself. First, uh, about 10 years ago, I started to practice something called the Mucusless Diet Healing System by Professor Arnold Eric. Now, before I was introduced to this diet modality, I weighed upwards of 280 pounds. I also suffered from quite a bit of painful chronic ailments. I used to have migraine headaches every day. Uh, in fact, when I was in high school, there was a, I had this special prescription of Tylenol or migraine medicine that was in the nurse's office. And I would usually ask one of my teachers to if I could go to the nurse's office to lay down, uh, take a pill and lay down almost every day, you know. And this is, you know, freshman year of high school through senior year of high school. Um, migraine headaches, what else? I, I had uh, sleep apnea when I was 18. I got a CPAP unit that I, and if you don't know what a CPAP unit at night, sleep apnea is basically a condition of constipation that I would, I would learn later, but it's when you, it, you just have a, a lot of trouble breathing at night, particularly when you're sleeping, and so you snore a lot, and you, you know, you're just not really getting a good quality of, uh, of air. <laughs> you can't breathe. And so I was on the CPAP unit, and, uh, and that just basically pumps oxygen in. So at 18 years old, I'm going to bed with like oxygen at night. Um, had chronic bouts of bronchitis every year uh, in high school, pretty much. I think every year I got really bad. And, uh, and I, but I was particularly crazy because I played football. I was, at that time, in high school, I was about 250 pounds. And I was an offensive tackle and guard, offensive lineman. And I remember the, I just remember being on the football field and I'm like, got this bronchitis. And I know I have bronchitis. Yet, it's Friday night. And you're not supposed to miss a game, you know. And so I'm out there sick as a dog. I don't have any business. I don't have any business at school. I don't have any business on a football field. And I'm out there trying to play this game. And I'm sick as a dog. Now, I actually think I missed the next week. The next next week's game, I actually think that I, I, it got so bad that I, I just I had to stay home. But this mentality, you know, I mean, I bring this up now. Later, we'll talk about this because this is an interesting issue when you start to consider what we as mucus addicts, people that are addicted to pus and mucus, what we put ourselves through, you know, and the realities that we create, the lifestyle of stimulation that we put our, surround ourselves with, you know, these athletics, competition, uh, you know, this is all, in my opinion, kind of residue from kind of the, the, you know, barbarian, barbarous ages, uh, you know, medieval thinking. Uh, yet this is how a lot of, this is, that's the aesthetic for a lot of people. That's how they measure worth uh, is, you know, you gotta, gotta, you gotta be able to, you know, run marathons or uh, jump tall buildings in a single bound and, you know, this whole, Superman mentality, you know, when most of the people that are looked up to that's got all the, you know, 
big old muscles because I was I had that you know I had some some muscle 18 inch biceps and I could bench press 300 pounds and you know the whole nine yards and and I was looked at as cool you know I was looked at as like that's that's who people you know like I want to be like him I want to be big and you know and I put off this air like everything was cool you know but I was suffering didn't realize how bad I was suffering because I never felt anything different you know I never felt what it was like to not be totally just like mucus logged you know you say water logged you know we're mucus logged <laughs> where we are saturated with mucus through and through and you'll see me continually making this point because it seems like that's something that has to be driven home so much is that our condition the depths of our condition how chronic we uh, the chronicness of our mu mucus constipation is almost uh, unimaginable, you know. So it's almost like that's like a daily routine at this point. Is it's like okay, <laughs> you know, I basically you know, I look in the mirror in the morning, like like they say in uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, I, this is this is this is mucus. And pus anonymous here, and you know, I look in the mirror, and I'm like, you know, I am a mucus addict, period. You know, I'm a mucus addict. I admit it. Uh, so what are we gonna do? You know, what am I gonna do? Well, what I did was I started to transition. Started the transition diet uh, that's prescribed Arnold Eric's book. Now, we'll back up a little bit. Uh, in addition to, okay, I played, t told you a little bit about football and, and that side of things, but also a musician. And I've always been fascinated with music and love to improvise, you know, loved improvisation and, lo you know, live improvisation. And everybody's all you know in high school it's always this big deal oh man you, you're gonna go on and play football are you gonna what you gonna do in college and it was like well you know there was a part of me that wanted to do football not because i thoroughly loved the game uh i wasn't even really you know i never was into you know, like I, could, I couldn't tell you who was quarterback or what, this and that, you know, it wasn't, you know, I, I enjoyed the whole social situation that surrounded football, you know, and, uh, and, and you know, and, and you do get pushed, you know, you get pushed in a certain way is is a challenge, you know. But music was kind of always there, you know, I was kind of was more of an above average musician, I was an average football player. Uh, there was a couple other directions I could have went in, in terms of college, but I said, let me let me choose the hardest path. Let me choose the most uncertain path that exists, which is that of a jazz musician. <laughs> As you're talking about, I mean, you. you <laughs> I mean, anybody that, that is going to like, okay, I'm going to major in a music that's not popular music, that there's not a whole lot of people that make a living playing this music. It's not like 1946, you know, you use all these big bands and swing was the popular music around the world. And, you know, it's, it's, it's not like that. So when you get into jazz music you got to do it for another reason you're not doing it because you're trying to make money or become famous or something like that because uh the most famous jazz musicians are you know only known by a few people you know in the in, the, in terms of the uh you, you know the, the multiplicity of peoples on, on the earth but you do it out of love, you know, out of a out of a love for the art, and because you have to, because you have you hear 
what that music does, how it makes you feel, what you feel like when you play it, and you just have to do it, you know. So it's kind of like it's not really a choice, you know. If you if you have to make music, you have to make music, and. Uh, so I went down that road as I wanted to, to learn how to make music on the highest level that, that I could, could achieve. And so I went, I got accepted in the College Conservatory of Music at University of Cincinnati. And I went and started to, you know, get indoctrinated into, the, you know, the, the upper levels of academia, you know, music school uh you know i had this conviction that you know school can offer you a lot of resources and you know there's a lot of uh you know talented professors and all of that but i knew that i wasn't going to learn how to play only just staying within the confines of the school that I was gonna have to get out there, hit the streets, and try to learn how to play. And so I started going to jam sessions and uh, and anything that was just an opportunity to play or to see live music. I just I was there, and it was out when I was going out places there's a Greenwich Tavern this is all Cincinnati Ohio Greenwich Tavern and uh, Sonny's Jazz uh, you know these some of the places that, that I went to they had either jazz uh, jam sessions or something and I met along the along the way my freshman year college as I'm going to these jam sessions I meet brother air and he kind of you know we, we we see each other we keep seeing each other we don't talk too much or we just you know at some point we introduce each other say hi he was he was coming out to these jam sessions with a, a saxophone player named Chuck uh, Chuck Young and so I would see them, you know, and I was just, and I was just like trying to figure out this whole thing because I'm getting my butt kicked academically in school, you know, just just the rigor of CCM is something that can't even be explained uh, in terms of his freshman year academics, and so I got that happening, but I'm like still out here trying to hit the scene, you know. And there's still a third scenario where I'm out partying and drinking and, and, and doing the whole college thing, which I'm, I'll talk about that later. You know, so as I keep, continue to see Brother Air, you know, he, he kind of scopes me out and he's okay, he kind of takes me under his wing a little bit. And I never forget one, the, one of the conver real formative conversations that we had was we were at Sonny's at that jam session and he told me uh, he was like man you're already in the fraternity meaning I'm already uh, you know I don't have to prove nothing to nobody to be a jazz musician you know I'm already I'm already I'm already in the club you know, me, you know, where I don't have to feel like I have to bend over backwards to try to impress professors or other, other peers or whatever, you know. And so that really, that, you know, that was just a vibe, that was a whole mentality and a vibe that I, I had been searching for, you know. And so, you know, started hanging out. With, with him more and more and over time he started throwing little seeds out there about the diet you know the mucusless diet but we never really talked about it too much now my f good friend saxophone player Dr. Who he uh, we came up together he's a few years older than me but we played a lot of music together uh, at very 
kind of formative time year, time when I was in high school and we decided to try out for CCM together we both got into CCM and uh, we were the uh, as a story the, the fateful day when me and Dr. Who got exposed, uh, really got exposed to the mucus's diet and got ex inspired was at a performance, Erwin Stuckey piano player at Shea Nora, which was this, this restaurant in Northern Kentucky, Covington. And, uh, and it was like, man, they, <laughs> we were playing and then we had the, the the intermission and man they, they they always had this spread for musicians all this free food and so man me and dr who man we we grab we i just get this big old plate and i'm i was a sucker for free food i mean if i go someplace and there's free food don't let there be a stack of pizzas or you know, a bunch of chicken wings or something sitting there because I just, man, I just came straight through it. Like, you know, just and, and took as much as I could fit on a plate, eat it as fast as I could and go get some more, you know. And so, you know, I had this plate filled up, man, Dr. Who did. It was another musician sitting across and then Brother Air. <laughs> And, and I'm like, just, I'm just going at it, man. I'm just eating this stuff. And I just, I look at him and he's just kind of giving me this this look. I'm like, man, what's what's that about? You know, but I, I, whatever. I, I just keep eating. And then somehow he throws something out there that make, that, that gets the conversation going about health and diet. You know, and he, the, I mean, I don't, the, the, the details of the conversation are blurry, but I know as the conversation went on, my eating slowed because it was one of those, like, we're talking and, uh, yeah, you know, uh, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, where you, you got the chicken in your hand and then you, and I'm sure, you know, those of you plant-based eaters have experienced that you, for some reason, when folks are eating, that's when the, the, these issues, these questions and, and discussions come up. And uh, is it, is it, you know, so he started, we was talking, and, uh, and so all of a sudden, uh, you know, the, the eating kind of stops. And the thing that got me was when he said he went a year eating nothing but fruit. He had just did a year where he, ate nothing but fruit, you know, fruitarian, I never heard of nothing like that, but it made total sense, it was, I was like, well, yeah, yeah, I mean, it just, it clicked in, it made all the sense in the world, if there's any beings on this planet that would be able to survive on all fruit, I would think a human could do it. You know, if, if you got gorillas and, and these, you know, these big old animals and orangutans and stuff, if if they're surviving on fruit, uh, or even the ones that eat vegetables, you know, fruits and, and leaves, if they can be as strong as they are and survive, then why can't humans? That was that made a lot of sense to me at the time, and. So that was a real, you know, for both me and Dr. Who, that conversation just was like a game changer. And Dr. Who immediately went and got the mucus's diet. He had actually already, he had had a conversation with Brother Air a couple years earlier that, you know, a couple, like a you know, half hour conversation inspired Dr. Who to become vegetarian for six months. Uh, and then fell back and then we just realized like oh you know they just I was oh yeah you they were the you know they, they had already talked and so so Doctor Who was ready I I was uh, I did what a lot of people do that I tell people don't do but I didn't 
I didn't get the book. I went back to the dorm cafeteria and I just started eating nothing but fruit. Just apples and oranges is, is mainly what they had. And so I went a, about a week eating nothing but fruit. In my head, I just, I just wanted to see if I would die. I was like, let me, let me just see what would happen. Now that's not what, please don't do that, disclaimer. Just telling you what I did, and, and that's something, that's a mistake a lot of people make where they hear other people eating a lot of fruit, and then they go and just try to do this fruit fast without reading anything, without studying anything, just go off. Now, a lot of what happens, a lot of people is they get terribly weak, they get really sick, the elimination starts going crazy, and they want to blame the fruit. That has nothing to do with the fruit. Fruit didn't cause none of that. The fruit's trying to help you eliminate that. But you're trying to be too aggressive because you didn't transition into that. Now with me, it, it was kind of like a, a jump start. You know, it was kind of like, like, boom, you know, I felt better, lost a little weight. You know, I was, you know, so that little week of a fruit fast worked. Uh, for me, and then I, and by that time, then I was like, okay, uh, let me, let me, let me read this book. And before I read the book, I, I kind of had like a last meal, <laughs> you know, because I, I knew that the book was gonna change my life. I knew it was gonna be over uh, after that book, and so I, you know, I think I, I, I don't even remember where I went, but I went someplace and I just pigged out, it was just. I mean, you know, something that was like a, ah, man, I wish I remember what I did, but I did something that was, that was a lot of eating. Uh, seemed like it was an Italian, you know, I used to love Italian food. And uh, even though I, you know, I understand that I, I you know, America, you know, Amer really it's American food, Americanized Italian food or, or or food in America that's called Italian, whatever. But I used to love it. And uh, so I think I went and just pigged out on that with, with some, or something. Then I read the Mucus's Diet book and it was over after that. It was like, okay. I mean, every page just it was like lit up it just it, it it's it was like reading itself to me and it all made so much sense you know and it was something i had been searching for but i didn't know what form it was going to come in you know it's like when people say uh you know if you pray you know or you meditate or you put out vibrations into the universe of things that you really want to know, you know, or something that you really want to attain, but you don't know necessarily what it is. I didn't know that health was the path that I was going to have to take to achieve what it is that I want to achieve. Uh, but I was led down, I was led to this information, uh, this profound, profound information for humanity at this time in history. And so it was like, wow, man, I'm, I'm holding on. I mean, this is like, you know, mucus is diet healing system rational fasting I'm holding on to I got something here this is something this is something important this is something special this is something that not enough people know about and also knew it was going to be incredibly difficult and challenging to be able to go down this path, this lifestyle, if that's what I chose, you know, if I was going to choose this lifestyle. Because, see, a lot of people get introduced to the mucus's diet on their deathbed 
or if they're really sick or they have like like chronic illnesses. The, the, the book was developed by Eric as he was curing thousands of people that were already deemed as being terminal, terminally ill by the medical authorities at the time. You know, so the movies is dying.